it's that time again. Time to open another really old subscription box grab bag. Let's see what's inside. Let's just dump it out. I've already opened and peeked back when I got it, but that's all right. So this is a Sketchbox grab bag, and I don't subscribe to Sketchbox, but once in a while they have specials or these grab bags where you get a really good value of supplies for not very much money, and I sometimes participate in that. So Pentel, oh, that's unique. You guys see that? Koi six watercolor brush pens. That should be fun. Extra fine acrylic, kind of a empty brush marker, basically, or probably for this stuff, acrylic water-based high-quality acrylic paint. And this is why I really wanted to open this today because I knew it was in here and I really need to use this. <laughs> it's the Handbook Journal Company watercolor sketchbook. Yeah, so nice long sheets, lay pretty flat, and I've been dying to try this out. Kind of black brush pen. Emoji, not in our language. <laughs> and this, I did yank this out a while ago, and uh, I think I did one of those watercolor coloring book pages with it, or maybe not. It looks hardly used, so maybe I barely swatched something. I'm not sure. So doesn't look very used. Maybe I just looked at it. <laughs> There's a couple water spots, so I think I probably swatched it or something. But and a cute little brush. This has not been used. It still has the glue sizing stuff on it. Round size four, real short, but it's kind of cool. I like that they put a brush in there that fits in their little palette. Cheap plastic. This is De La Rowney Aquafine watercolors. And, whoo, like the super ultra deluxe light up my life ink tints blocks. Oh. <laughs> I actually have a set of 24 of these blocks. So I'm sure all of these are duplicate colors. And guess what? I don't care because I absolutely love ink tints. Ink tints is just like, ah, just makes me happy. I love using them. I love the results. They're so bright and vibrant. And to have more blocks, yes, please. Okay, let's play. Starting right out with the De La Rowney Aquafine watercolor set. I began by swatching the colors because I couldn't find a previous swatch sheet. So I'm not sure what I used it for previously. Anyway, I wasn't very impressed with them out on the swatch but this is only 90 pound watercolor paper it's not cotton so it's nothing special so maybe it's that i'm going to try it later on different better paper you can see that little plastic palette comes out if you want separate mixing areas and then it is glued in tough and i wanted that gone that plastic covering for the color names was just in the way so that needed to go away as far as what to paint, I decided to paint a little winter cabin that's pretty ramshackle. So it's kind of falling apart. There's no door on it, just open into the black space inside. And I wanted a very foggy winter scene, and I found a reference for this on Pixabay. And the good news here is that when I was actually painting this little picture with this paint, it felt way better than when I was doing the swatches. So I don't know, just mixing the colors together made them act better or what, but I really like the way they acted on the paper for this little scene anyway. I had zero problems with them. Really enjoyed the painting. I like how they spread. They did exactly what I expected when I expected. And so it worked out nicely. So I want a blurry kind of background. That's why I keep adding water and blobs of paint in the background there. I don't want any big detail back there. So the brush worked great. I loved it. It's short, but it didn't bother me. It wasn't short enough that it was awkward in my hand. So it, yeah, it was nice. I enjoyed this thoroughly. At the end, I tried to do some snowflakes with the Posca pen. I didn't try. I succeeded actually, but then I didn't like them in the door that much. And I ended up painting over a few of the snowflakes in that doorway, which I don't think is on this video, but this is how it turned out. And next I'm moving on to the Koi water brush pens. These are really nice. I have tried Arteza water brush pens and I didn't like them. In fact, I think they're in my giveaway bin right now. And I gave them several chances, but these Koi ones, I think because the tips are firmer, I just liked them a lot. You could see how they spread in water, so you could get really cool effects here with these. And when I do the black in the middle here in a second, it kind of gives me a sparkle of an idea for what I want to draw slash paint with these. So 
Look how it spreads. It's just really neat. And later it separated into two colors. You can kind of see that on the left there. It separated into the dark black and the left side of that black dot had some brown color in it and the right side of that black dot had some blue color in it. So that was really cool. And here you can see in real time how nicely these markers spread on this paper. And the paper is a cold press finish so it's not fully smooth, not totally rough either, but it's, you know, just a regular cold press watercolor finish paper and just, it, I just had fun with these markers, which is surprising because I don't usually enjoy them all that much except for maybe in those watercolor coloring books. And here I dabbed some water on a petal and then I will take the marker and I will just dab it into that spot and it kind of spreads it a little more than just if you were to do it on the dry paper. And then later I take the brush back over it. I use a couple different colors. I use the brown there at the base of the petal and that red. And I keep pausing and looking at my reference photo so I make sure that I don't put a color in a strange spot because the human eye is particularly good at picking out weird things like that. You'll be like, wait a minute, it's not supposed to be there or that looks weird there. So back to the grab box for a minute. I bought that in November of 2018. The price listed on it was $38, but I had a 25% off coupon for Cyber Monday, so I only paid $28.45 for this, which was a steal of a deal, considering that the ink tints alone are like $24 by themselves. And here you can see another method I used a lot. I just have the brown and the red in my hands with their caps off, and I just dip the paintbrush onto the side of the tip of the marker, and then put the color onto my painting where I want it to be. And this gives me a little bit more control and a way to get a bit of a lighter color right off the bat. So that's a really good tip. It did lighten up the edge of the marker where I touched it with the brush so many times, but if you just scribble with it a few times on a piece of paper that goes away pretty fast, so no big deal and it didn't hurt anything. It was a really nice way of using the markers. It gave me so much control. I just really had fun with this one, if you can't tell. <laughs> and just continuing those same steps over and over again until I get it all colored like I want. You'll see here for the middle I put the orange dots, wet the whole thing, and then drop the marker ink into it just like I did on that little test strip on the left there that I zoomed in for you guys earlier. And then I used the green and darker colors and layered over that stem and it really was fun and I thought for the background I would take advantage of the way they spread in water and just water the whole thing down and then put the green dots in there along with a couple of yellow ones to indicate some more flowers. Now it didn't turn out exactly the way I thought that background didn't but it's still pretty and I like the flower itself so I think we did okay. All right moving on to the ink tints. A lot of people don't like ink tints because they dry really matte so it's a very flat color at least that's what people claim. I like the way they look. I think they're beautiful. They're very vibrant. You can see here they just have a punch of color. It's just pretty cool. So I take the Pintel stylo and I go ahead and write the numbers on here. And these numbers are only on the blocks themselves. There's nothing on the tin to tell you the color names or the numbers, anything that's in here. And I had already used that dark brown color and I put water right over the number and I couldn't read the number already. So I'm like, oh, well, that one doesn't get a number. <laughs> And you can tell here, well, maybe you can't tell yet, but I decided to paint blueberries. I just thought with the colors I had in here, they just spoke to me of blueberries. So we are doing blueberries, and I put in the darks first, which is the opposite of a lot of people, but it really helps me get a placement for these because I didn't do a sketch. So the dark colors basically are my sketch. And here I use some of the light brown and the yellow, the, the bright yellow mixed together in order to get those little brown spots in the blueberries themselves. So it's these final details here at the very end that really make them look actually like blueberries before they're kind of like blobs of color. So those final details, don't underestimate them. They're really important. Here they are. I really like them. That's because I'm biased and I love ink tints, but <laughs> there we go. And I forgot to turn the camera on for this next part and I already filled this with the camera off. So I'm just showing you here how I did it. This screws on the opposite direction so you have to do it backwards of what we're used to here in the US and then that just pulls out and it pulls out really easily when it's not full but since it's full it created a vacuum so I wasn't able to get it out without fear of making a really big mess but yeah when it's empty it just pops right out there like you don't even hardly have to try so it 
just squeezes in from the other bottle and it's fast and easy and then you push it down just like a Posca marker or other acrylic paint markers it's exactly the same thing you just prime it by pumping it up and down and the color comes out and it's an acrylic paint marker and I filled that completely and there's still shoot I don't know two-thirds of that bottle left probably quite a bit so I decided to go a lot more easy going with this one and use the last three supplies which is the Pintel Stylo which is not waterproof the Bemoji pen which is it seems to be waterproof I think I just put my water on it before it was dry and then the acrylic pen and so you can see I do this cute little bumblebees not anatomically correct or anything like that but I didn't care because he was adorable and the acrylic paint marker work just like paint markers do you have to prime it every once in a while and you know be careful because I used the Pentel stylo liner for some of this so I had to make sure that didn't smudge because it really really wanted to smudge a lot <laughs> and you can see here is how it turned out and real quick here is a recap of everything we did today little cabin in the woods with the Daler Rowney aquafine watercolors followed by the Koi watercolor brush pens. We got our little flower, so cute. And the Ink Tense blueberries. Still love them. And the cute, simple little bee. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really glad you were here. Thanks for spending your time with me. If you like these videos, subscribe to my channel for more. And make sure you hit the like button. It really helps my channel out. We will see you in the next video.